We all go through the things discussed in this series on confidence. I know many athletes that have gone through much worse. We will talk about those and they will be guests on future podcasts. But for now, the closest thing to what I know is what I have been through and what the athletes I know personally and those that I've trained have told me. The spring series was a challenge because I had no coaches, no team, no support, and no way of knowing if I could find a team to train with so I could run gates. Running gates is vital in race preparation. Timing has to be on. You feel the skis arcing turn to turn the right way so you're confident of your equipment and your ability. How it's going to react on the snow determines whether you're on the right line. Before you get in the start for a race, you have to know all of these. What can you do when you don't have all of these things? You and I are all faced with that almost every day because we have dreams and visions and goals and things we want to accomplish. But we look and we say, but I, it's what we do after, but I. I'm Jungle Jim Hunter and you're listening to 831 Living Your Best Life podcast where we inspire participation, communicate precision and empower performers to podium. And I hope that you will tell your friends and relatives and co-workers to go to their favorite podcast provider or junglejimhunter.com and YouTube and subscribe, download, click on like, rate and review us and become an 831er, somebody who is inspired to help somebody else live their best life. Well, it's 14 days to the 32nd Olympic Games and 46 days to the 16th Paralympic Games. And I hope you will watch and support the teams that you are interested in and your country's teams. So what choice do I have? At that point, free skiing and imagining your running gates and using people as human gates is the only other way I could pretend I was running the gates. But it's not the same. This series of races, you raced, traveled, trained one day, raced the next two days, and then repeated the process. The U.S. team would race against the kids who the national team coaches had not seen perform in comparison to the team, so giving them a chance to see how they would do against the best in the country solved their searching problem for the next year's talents. It also gave these racers a chance to improve their points, and this is vital. Every racer is seeded or gets his performance number because of the points earned in previous races. The best point holders in the top 10 in a result are averaged, and that penalty is added to each racer's race points calculated based on how much time he is behind the winner. The lower the average of the best point holders and the closer a racer is to the winner, and thus you lower your points for the future. The lowest points holders get the best start numbers, and that's why it's vital to improve your points. Watching teams setting up to train, it didn't take long to see the coaches who had no helpers, and the national team coaches amazingly had no helpers, and I wanted to ski their courses and ski with their racers, so I carried their gates and sideslipped, and when finished, asked what time he would be finished training so I could come back and help him tear down. I tore down the course and shoveled ruts and sideslipped the course for the next day. Each day repeated. This time he asked where my team was. I told him I was alone and from Canada and had come down to learn from the best of the best of the best. I saw him eating lunch and cleaned up his tray. He invited me to train with him. I asked him if there were any rules to follow and thanked him. Then headed out to help reset the afternoon's course. I had as many runs as I could get in, and he even told me what I could work on. Then I helped tear down. This process repeated as the series carried on all that spring. Soon it was just the two of us, me sideslipping, dragging poles, the shovel, and helping him set the courses. This was easy. This was unbelievable. Dad was clear when he made the move from the dairy farm in Saskatchewan and gave me the chance with my mom and moved to Calgary so that I could improve my ski racing. But the rule was I had to improve all the time or else it was back to the farm. It was his form of motivation. To me, it was incentive. We lived in Thorncliffe, a district facing to the northeast in Calgary. Nose Hill climbed up from the community, and North Mount Boulevard crossed a valley gorge 300 meters from Colonel Irvin Jr. High, where I went to school. There were streetlights on North Mount, and the slope faced to the northeast, so the snow cover stayed a long time. 
I gathered slalom gates and a steel bar to punch holes for the gates in the snow, and I would pack them up and set my courses, and I would train under the lights on the bridge. I would get up at four in the morning and ride my bike in my ski boots for 10 minutes from home with my school clothes and my books in the backpack and train under the streetlights and make as many runs as possible before I heard the school bell. I could ski at lunchtime and after school until my mom picked me up on the way home from work. I had to plan it so course teardown and side slipping was completed before she arrived. My ski meister coaches watched me improve weekly, and the fact that when it was time to set up and tear down, they could count on me to be there. This preparation steals your confidence. Yes, it steals your confidence. It makes you more confident. At 4.15 in the morning, alone under a streetlight, climbing and setting a course, packing it down, climbing up, skiing down, studying tracks, trying to find out and figure out what the coaches had taught me the two nights a week that I skied at Happy Valley and on the weekends when we skied or raced was all developing confidence. If you can do this, you can do anything. Here in the Spring Series, 831ers, a U.S. ski team coach, was setting the courses for me. Wow! All I had to do is carry gates, shovel ruts, and side slip. Now I had every problem solved. I had food, a bed, transportation, lift tickets, training, and coaching. All for almost nothing. You see, confidence really is belief in what is made. When you know what you had to go through, you have a solid foundation to place your confidence on. A confident person is one that is a metal maker. Not metal as in Olympic metal, not metal as in steel, but metal. The development of your heart. My mother wrote me letters while I traveled, and at the bottom of one of her letters, she wrote a quote that helped me understand that hard work is not hard. It's heart work because you are growing the heart of you stronger, not just the physical heart fitter. Big themes like belief and courage and character and faith gives confidence a road to run on. It becomes your first response before anything else. It's what education, skill, fitness, tactics, and teamwork run on. These are minor skills compared to heart work. The word metal, M-E-T-T-L-E, -E, means a person of courage and fortitude. It is the disposition or temperament. It is one that is incited to do one's best. To win a medal, you have to be on your medal because it is the kind of person you are. 831, living your best life is inspired because of the kindness of 831 people that helped. They didn't have to. They weren't asked. They didn't have to do anything, but they were inspired to do so. They did it because they saw someone that helped others first, empowering them to help me. This is within the grasp of every person. This you can do today. You don't need more of something you don't have. You already have it. You may have to seek help, training, and experience people to follow or be around, but if you move in this direction with congruent consistency, it will find you. Be on your metal. Thank you for listening. My quote for the day, the metal of your heart sees you through the valleys and the mountaintops, so seek to train it above all else. I hope you will have grown and we'll be living your best life the next time we meet.